Welcome back to another episode of the Mythic Draft Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Ron. Well, today to, uh, is brought to you by the letter C for stupid Canada smoke. I actually yelled at somebody on the bypass today. We're coming back from lunch. And I was like, oh, look, they're, they're from Quebec. It's like, hey, take your smoke back with you. You know, maybe this is just mm. revenge for all the times we've smoked up Canada. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, I feel bad for the people of Canada. Oh yeah, these I mean, raging wildfires. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even checked. Do they have them like most of the way under control now? You know, I haven't. I haven't looked. I think they were good for a week because we had all that rain. But I don't, yeah. I don't know. But surprisingly, at least I was up in the you know New England, and it wasn't bad up there. I think it's yeah. just kind of settled down here. I think this is this time it's more westernly than it was last time. Uh, yeah. But, you know. Turns out yeah. trees burn. Yeah, yeah, still got something going on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Last Friday there were five hundred active fires in Canada. Oof. It's a big country. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's a not, you know populated sparsely. You know, it's like yes. dense pockets of population. Something like 80% of their population lives within 12 miles of the U.S. border or something. Wow. Oh, well, yeah, because you go too far north, there's polar bears. and Polar bears, like there are. Narwhals. Like, yeah, I assume. Or, you know. Well, that, bears, I mean, bears. Santa doesn't want you to get too close to his operation. Yeah, can't get too close to the North Pole. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it tends to get cold up there. Yeah. I'd like to go... I'd like to go to the Arctic. I don't think I care about going to the Antarctic, but I'd like to go up to the Arctic Circle. Really? I think that'd be a cool place to visit. You know, while we still have one. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll always have an Arctic Circle. It's just... It'll be like Bermuda. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, th- I just think it'd be cool to... I just feel like the last real wilderness in North America is north of us. I guess. I'd say if you go to Iceland, you'll be just barely south of the Arctic Circle. I've always wanted to visit Iceland. Or if you go to Skorsbesund, Greenland, you'll be in the Arctic Circle. Uh, not so keen on Greenland. Because of the Danes? I just feel like it's not very green. No. I feel like that was a, that was a misnomer. Yeah. But anyways, you know, I've always had it like a, what was that? Uh, An itch? Bafta Bay or whatever. I'd always want to go up there. Okay. Yeah. Just be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Be a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like eight hours to Canada from my house. This is probably another two hours up to the Arctic Circle. You know. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once you hit, yeah, it's a straightaway. Yeah. So there's a good highway right up. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. this way to Arctic Circle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just head north. Yeah. Just break out your compass. Or you got that little compass in the dash of your car. Just Yeah. Well, when my car's computer is working. <laughs> is it messing up again? Still, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. gosh. Yeah. It does good for like a month, and then it just like will have this. Hmm. It goes crazy. I don't know. Is it like some weird kind of updates it needs to do? or Maybe. I don't know how to force it to update. <laughs> or it's probably one of those things where they make it take it to the shop, you know. Is it voice just, control, maybe? I just need to call them and say, hey, this thing's under warranty. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. Maybe just the next time in your car, you just need car, update. Car, <laughs> do your update thing. Yeah. And it's like, okay, pulling over now. <laughs> no. Estimated time. If they unload five 12 days. hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's okay because all the construction around here, I'd be stuck in traffic anyways. Wait. Is there actual construction though? No, it's just yeah. lanes it, closed. I, it's yeah, it's like the for threat no of construction. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of that in Connecticut. <laughs> well, they don't want to work too hard. Yeah. Work yourself out of a job. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. the the road that my neighborhood is off of has been under construction. And then they stopped because they, they finished seemingly we're done. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I, I went to work the other day and it's like, 
Why is there a whole lane closed? Why are there <laughs> permanent looking barriers out? I don't know what they're doing. Mm. <sighs> That's one of those they had extra funding, so they're like, oh yeah, let's yeah, resurface let's, the road. Let's see if we can annoy Ron Wismer today. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. That's a, I, mm. Well, I saw the stoplight down from your fire station. They were actually out there with like I'm assuming some it was some kind of measuring stick or something. There's a guy in the intersection with like this 16 foot stick and another guy with a transponder looking at him. So I'm assuming they're doing something soon. Wow. That would yeah. be something. Yeah. It's only been down for six months. Well, it, that one isn't that they're saying that was because they don't have the parts for the light or something. That's what they said. They don't have the parts yeah. for that style of light anymore and they can't get them anywhere. Yeah. Here's a novel concept. Put a new light in. Yeah. Seems like the answer if they don't make the parts for that light. Yeah. Yeah. And it, well, then I listened to a city council meeting and there's apparently a bunch of these lights in the city that they don't make parts for anymore. <sighs> Did you not they see made by coming? the same guy who made Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Yeah, but that, I mean, did you not see this coming? Like, yeah. hey, all our red lights are from the 60s. We should probably right. fix them. <laughs> God dang. And so, yeah, uh, you know, all our police cars are run on that, you know, leaded petrol. <laughs> they should be around forever. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, well, I was just my mind. Thinking about the, uh, the other day, uh, talking about the county where I live in. So there's like 700,000 pe- people in my pe- county, I think. Wow. And north of the ditch is the busier part of the county. And uh, I don't know how many high schools they are, but I was thinking about they have not replaced. They haven't put a new high school in my county that was above the ditch since the 70s. So every building that's a high school in Newcastle County above the the ditch is at least 40 years old. And there's no plans to put a new one in there. Well, hopefully if they do plan to put one in there, they'll do like Wacomico County does and base it off of current populations instead of, instead of the expected populations. Well, no, if it so was... New, that if it when was... you build the school, you know, based off today, by the time it's done in three years, it's already over capacity. If so they were to do what Wacomico County does, they would put all three high schools directly next to each other. Duh. Duh. Doesn't that seem like the way to handle the problem? Yeah. <sighs> yeah that's why you have poor i feel bad for these poor kids in like willards right they, have, they must ride the bus for three hours how long is it from like west side to why high i'm assuming is where they go yeah that's like gonna be a long freaking bus ride yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. it's crazy uh, but yeah i just school infrastructure not being updated in 40 years seems like a real bad plan yeah yeah. Feels like they're going to be like, uh, we have an emergency. All of our schools are collapsing. <laughs> Should probably yeah. fix this. And not only that, but like, the pop- I don't know what the population is now compared to what it was 40 years ago. But I'm assuming there's more people. Yeah. I'm assuming. Assuming. Yeah. Maybe there's some secret thing they have going on that you don't want to know. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. That's why I'm not in the government. Yeah. Just a, a way that I'm a government worker. Duh! Ah, but it's not the same. It's not so. We are a much more inefficient version of the government. Uh, in some ways, yes. Um, in every way? I wouldn't say in every way. Of course, we are the most inefficient. We are one of the government uh, agencies about inefficiency. We could be the standard of inefficiency. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Salisbury, Maryland, in the middle of Wicomico County. Uh, the only three staff stations in the whole county are all within a mile of each other. That doesn't make sense. We built a new station that's <laughs> next to two other stations yeah. and is in the least populous part of the city. Hmm. Yeah. How much did that station cost us? It was yeah. free, right? Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the aldermans and 
people paid for it years ago. Remember when we paid a company to tell us what the fire department should look like in 15 years, and then we did none of those things? Yeah. We made paper airplanes out of those. Yeah. 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 Hey, remember when a a company approached us and said, we will give you land? Yeah. 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 We will give you land. All you have to do is put a pole building up and you can have a fire station here. Yeah. No, we don't want a pole building. We want something nicer than that. Yeah. Meanwhile, the people who actually ride the pieces are like, I don't care what you put us in. Right. So this has got a bathroom, a kitchen, and bunks. We're good. Yeah. That's how you, you know, in my trips to the Northeast last week, uh, surprisingly, you know, the engines and trucks that I saw riding around Boston, they they weren't all shiny and like parade pieces going down the road. Weird. They looked like they were designed to work. Weird. Weird. Yeah, that's weird. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I had, had a conversation with a chief at work the other day, and I said, so when are we going to actually address the fact that the busiest station in our state, in our department, has an engine that's 15 years old? Well, we're working on that. <laughs> and then that, a different chief that. said, it's weird, you guys' engine breaks down a lot. Hmm. What do you think that is? Well, part of it also is, I mean, that mechanic shop we use, I mean, they are like turn things around so quickly and troubleshoot and, you know, they're just on top of it. Yeah. It's almost like you shouldn't buy into a monopoly. Almost. Uh, yeah. 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 So I would say, yeah, we have some inefficiencies. We could maybe, maybe we shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. Yeah. So happier tones. Uh, have you seen Indiana Jones and the, Last Crusade? I don't know what it what is. Dial of Destiny. Dial of Destiny. I have not. I have not either. I did see the Flash. You saw the Flash. I did. And you felt it was. Ah. That sounds like a <laughs> review right there. <laughs> no, I, it was fun. It was more fun than I've had in a DC movie in a very long time. Uh, I don't know that I exactly love the way they interpreted the whole flashpoint thing. Um, but it wasn't dark and brooding and the whole time, but it's also, you know, it, it's hard to look at it and say, well, you know, cause this makes sense when DC's doing a control alt delete right now. So this movie doesn't tie to anything, doesn't lead to anything. The Flashverse confuses me because seemingly everybody in the Flashverse is the fastest person in the universe. There seems to be, to me, I'm there's looking few, on the outside, there's 12 people who claim to be the fastest person in the universe. Yeah, there's there's quite a few speedsters. And one of them has a drug that makes him faster. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because he's already the fastest person in the universe. Yeah. Because so fast. Well, in that universe, not the multiverse. Yeah, I will say there were some fun cameos in the movie. And, I mean, I laughed at some spots and everything, but yeah, he like said it was more fun than the DC movie's been in a while. It definitely. Yeah, if this had been like the first, I think it would have been a good stepping stone for DC, but sure. Yeah. Suicide Squad was OK. The second one. Yeah. Yeah. The second one. Yeah. The first, first, one, first, one, uh, no, first one was terrible. No. Yeah. yeah. The first one was an abomination. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. But, yep. And now, uh, what's it? Secret wars or secret invasions out. Yeah. And I'm not sure I care. Um, it is, they should have renamed it fury. Sure. Cause it's just about Nick fury. Right. We've yeah. watched the first two episodes. I mean, it's not bad, but it's like, well, part of it is, and God, the guy should have never said it. The director was like, oh, yeah, we're not we never read the comic or anything. This is our own, you know, oh boy. it's like, why would you do that? Right. Even if you're going to do that, don't say that. Right. Because, you know, the fans are just going to you know, get up in arms. Yeah, that's dumb. 
Yeah. And that's the other thing. Then don't call it secret invasion. Call it, you know, Fury's day trip. I don't know. Whatever you call it. Fury and the green guys. Yeah. 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 We were talking about last night, actually. Um, I haven't really watched any of the Marvel TV shows. Um, Because my buddy brought up Moon Knight. We were randomly talking about, started as Disney. Talk about Daisy Ridley and oh yeah, the guy who played Finn. Oh, um, what is his name? I can see him. I can see him too. Yeah, we were talking about how they basically have not had real careers, right? Since Star Wars, whereas the guy who played Poe is everywhere. He's like, oh yeah, he was in Moon Knight. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. He was also in, you know, the Dune and all these other things. And now Daisy Ridley is coming back to do a Disney movie after saying she would never work for Star Wars again. It's like, oh, did you realize that Star Wars is a cash cow and you need a job? Yeah. John Boyega. John Boyega, yeah. Yep. Uh, he was in Pacific Rim, too. Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> Pacific Rim wasn't very good in the first place. Pacific right. Rim 2 was awful. Yes, it was. Ugh. Yeah. Well, um... You just said his name, and I can't think. And now I can't think of it. He played Moon Knight. Um, Oscar. Oscar Isaac. Oscar. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So he's played three Marvel characters now, because he was Apocalypse in that horrible X Men movie. Apocalypse in that movie. He was. Hmm. He was Moon Knight, and now he also voiced um, Spider Man twenty ninety nine in the Spider Verse movie. That's a fun fact. Yeah, so he's, yeah, now three people. Well, the good news is nobody would have known it was Apocalypse. Oh my gosh, that was so bad. Well, Josh Brolin's been two. Yeah. Right? Yep. He's Thanos, Thanos and, and Cable. Cable. Yeah. I never really liked Cable in the comics. That was a he's very... A, he's a whack job in the comics. Yeah, it's a very convoluted storyline. It's weird. Yeah. The whole X Force thing was weird. Yeah. X Force. Yeah. Yeah, X Force. Yeah, Cable's X Force. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, I always thought X Force was a little. It was like a leap too far. Yeah. It was. It, it really was this weird time in comics where, like, the Summer family, you know, Scott and his oh, brother yeah. Alex, yep, were like this. Destiny, you know, this like bloodline of destiny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where like everybody was related to them somehow. Yeah. It was real weird. Yeah, because, well, Cable's Nate Summers. Yeah. And then there's Hope Summers. That's Cyclops and Jean Grey's clones kid or something. Well, and then their dad is the Corsair. Corsair dear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, and now X Force in the comics is like the secret service of the mutants, like the hmm. Black Ops people, hmm. run by Beast, hmm. who is not a nice guy anymore. Well, yeah. it's been sixty years. Yeah, get angry. He had a good run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean X Men was fun. X Force was a little weird. X Factor gets weirder. Yeah, because that's when you had you had like Havoc and Polaris and yeah, but who was the bad guy in X Factor? The original bad guy. The original uh, bad guy in X Factor. Sinister. Yeah, yeah that guy. Yeah. yeah. Like who 90s. is also a Summers or something, isn't he? Something like that. He's somehow yeah. related to the whole thing. <sighs> Scott needs to keep it in his pants. That clearly, well, it was really his dad's <laughs> fault. But yeah, you know. Plus, he kicked his kids out of a burning plane. What? That's the whole backstory. Is they were? Oh, you st- no! You're talking about the stupid singer movie. No, I'm talking about the comic books. Oh, the backstory is that they were shot down. Uh, Scott was Scott and Alex were. Shot down by some in some plane. I, I swear I'm not making this up. No, no, that does sound right now. <laughs> I mean, Scott Summers 
shot down with I suppose it's havoc, right? Yeah. Why would his dad just throw him out the <sighs> Yeah, his father was Christopher Summers flying him and his wife and his two kids in their private Havilland Mosquito and they were attacked by a starship from the Shi'ar Empire. Oh. Yeah. Damn Shi'ar. Damn Shi'ar. And yeah. Hmm. Um, they only had one parachute. They put it on Scott and told him to hold on to Alex and then push him out the plane door. Huh. Okay. You're putting a lot of faith in your kid's ability to hold on to one another. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Between wind shear and that, that sudden uptake of a parachute. Yeah, maybe try to like wedge them both into the harness. Hmm. Like put him in front of him like a little baby Bjorn. Yeah, uh, that's when they formed the Star Jammers. Oh, yeah. Because they had Corsair. He had like the gems on his arms. So he would like slap and have pistols or something. Sure. <laughs> and then somehow I sort of remember Professor X was like dating a Shi'ar chick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like she had that weird hair. It was like a flat, like, I don't know, like a U on top of her head almost. Like little segments in it. But yeah. And then, yeah, because that tied all into, because they were being threatened by the brood. And those yeah. weird alien weird. things were taking over everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. Cause that's how the X-Men had all the, um, they had all the technology because of the Shi'ar and right. professor X getting naughty with them. Yep. Yeah. Rachel Summers. Yeah. She is, oh, I can't remember her name. It's like Dawn star or something weird like that. Uh, she's a psychic. I know that. She's in the Phoenix Force. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> she's the. I must have misspelled that because she, this is saying that she's an author of lesbian fiction. Oh, Good for you, Rachel. Daughter oh. of the alternate future counterparts of Cyclops and Cyclops and Jean Grey Summers. Okay. From the days of future past timeline. Mm. Falcon? Huh. Gabriel Sh Summers? There's too Gabe? many Summers. Yeah, there's a lot of Summers. Huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Some things with comics, it's like, that. don't try to explain to me how the sausage is made. <laughs> so, Actually, I recently watched Invincible. That's pretty good. Invincible, the cartoon on Prime. Yeah, Prime. Oh, I've not yeah. seen it yet. It's uh, it's written by the same guy who wrote The Walking Dead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yes. Yeah. I, think, I mean, it's yeah. good voice acting. It's it's definitely violent, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. And I like it because you know, like. My oldest and I watched it and, you know, neither one of us had, know anything about it. We haven't read the comics or books or anything. So it's just like, no idea. So that's fun. I'm sorry. I'm not on a deep dive on. All Oof, of mate, that's summers. a dangerous thing, man. I know. See, this is going to screw you up like the time trial or time <laughs> paradoxes screwed me up. <laughs> God. Well, then we found out that the earth might be in a black hole. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was watching something the other night, you know, like my wife came home and I had, she's like, are you watching another one? I was like, I did stop. I stopped it. I was saying, all we got to do is figure out the quantum mechanics of time. Then we would be, yeah. Yeah. We got to figure out how gravity works in the quantum field or something like that. So I tasked my daughter with it. I said, figure it out. Good job. Yeah, yeah. So. To say, hey, you fix this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, but the whole time travel thing, the whole ten o'clock, I figured it out. I've got a code word now. Well, don't tell anybody. That's why I'm saying I can't. Yeah. But if that happens, I I have a code word, and 
if the other me knows it, then I know it's me. But if not, then whew, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's uh, an imposter you. Yeah. That could be, that's a real problem. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's not so. real. Real problem. <sighs> well, let's get ramble. Yeah. We got a, went off on a Scott Summers yeah. rant. So, um, I think we can move <laughs> to topic one now. Topic one. Uh, so this is lighthearted and fun. Don't nice. get angry. Okay. So it's your first job. I was, uh, I've been playing a lot of Seven Days to Die, which is one of my favorite computer games. Okay. And uh, I was thinking about it. If you and I were characters in the apocalypse, what would our RPG skill tree look like? Ooh. Yeah. So I came up with some skills, and you're going to give me a rating of where you think you're at on that skill tree. It's one to five. I was going to, you know, make you give me stats for yourself, but I didn't really yeah. want you to have to, you know, do that. Okay. Um, so. Hmm. And this is apocalyptic, like Mad Max. Whatever apocalypse you wants to have for yourself. Oh, 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 oh I, yeah. <laughs> apocalypse du jour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, taking the stats of you yourself right now, okay. where do you think you are in yeah. those, you know, those little groups? So if you okay. were to make a skill check, you would be using your stats. Ooh. I so like first that. one. Um, that I came up with should be easy for both of us. First aid. And remember, it's a scale of one to five. Yeah, yeah. So when I thought about this, here's how I look at it. If you have a one, you basically know nothing about it. Yeah. If you have a five, you are a world renowned expert in that thing. Mm. All right. So first aid, I give myself a four. Four? Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to give myself a three first aid i figure i'm better than average and but i'm not willing to do field surgery so I, i'd get in there <laughs> you get in there yeah yeah i was thinking about that when i was thinking about first aid. i was like a paramedic's really good to have in most scenarios except that your long-term care isn't great <laughs> yeah yeah I, short term yeah it's good deal yeah 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 i'll get you patched up and everything and then the next day you're like oh it still hurts i'm like i don't know what to do <laughs> Yeah. They're there. <laughs> um, uh, bite down on this stick. Right. Well, you know, and I figured also as a paramedic, I have, I can find pills in pharmacies and kind of know what they're for. Yeah. You know, and at least yeah. I can look things up. I got a general knowledge. That's why I gave myself a three. Yeah. Yeah. So I, was, I can figure it out. All right. right so this survival. sounds like a psyllin. So this is some kind <laughs> of antibiotic. A psyllin of some sort. Yeah. Uh, survival. So this is not your ability to shrug off damage. This is your ability to create campsites and find water. And you <laughs> do you know, have a crack. pot with a lid? You, you have a pot with a lid. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, I was a boy scout. I don't survive. Say a high two, low three. Okay, I'm gonna give you a, a two. Yeah, I gave myself a four. Wow, because I feel like I was a Boy Scout. Yeah, camped a lot. Hey, I mean, uh, once a Boy Scout, always a Boy Scout. Always a Boy Scout, always prepared. Yeah. I watch a lot of videos on survival and bushcraft. That's, you do. So I, I'm very invested in that world. So I gave myself. I have better knowledge than most people is what I looked at. Yeah, but I'm not Bear Girls. No, no, I don't think anyone is uh fishing fishing yep this is not fishing for sport this is fishing Fishing. for survival for survival yeah Yeah, i give myself a four i grew up fishing i fish all the time i haven't in a while but yeah i actually thought you would get a higher than a four but you know i no i I would i don't know i don't know how to like whisper to the fish i gave myself a two like i remember the basics of how to fish and I have been fishing before, but I don't feel like I have. Like, like people talk about, oh, you use this lure for this fish. I, I would have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta use a fuzzy nitwig to get a rainbow trout, and a purple squirter to get a, a trout. And... 
Uh, then we have cooking. A very important skill that you don't think about in survival situations. Yeah. <sighs> See, I want to go kind of mid to high on this because I, I can cook pretty well, but open flame out in the wild cooking is totally different. Because, I mean, post, post-apocalypse, post I don't think I'm going to have, you know, my nice four-burner stove and oven to work with. I don't think you're going to have your nice yeah. four-burner stove and oven. You're not going to have yeah. a refrigerator no. full yeah. of ingredients. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, three? I also went with three for myself, uh, figuring I'm a good cook. I know how to cook. I know the basics of cooking. I ha- do cook over fires. But, yeah, same thing. Like, I, I'm not going to have a meat thermometer. You know, gonna have to be guessing. Uh, smithing, a very important skill, post-apocalypse. Smithing. Yeah. <sighs> now this is the act of creating yeah. tools you need out of raw materials. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I, <sighs> gosh. If there's like a lump of iron, I can, yeah, I can make something. But if it would be like, you know, oh, you've got this pig iron and you've got to smelt it down and do, I see that I'm not good at. Uh, two? Uh, I think a two is generous. I gave myself a one. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I have been smithing. I have a friend who does blacksmithing. Uh, I would not be able to build my own forge. I would not be able to. <laughs> I just wouldn't be like, all right, I got to make a fork. I'll just, you know, would, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Hunting. This is hunting for food again. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> oh, no, we're not hunting for sport in the apocalypse. No. Uh, we're hunting for deals. Um, and you're going to have to make your stuff to hunt with. Oh yeah, this is this cover is making traps. This is if yeah. if the DM said you need to make a rabbit snare. Yeah. What's your skill in that? You know. Gosh. Once you're on an ammo, are you able to make arrows? Can you use a bow and arrow? Yeah, I can. Um... Uh oh, trouble afoot. Yep. Um, I give myself a three. I can I can make a bow and arrow if I need to. I can make minor snares and deadfalls. Yeah, I gave myself a one. I would be yeah. totally useless. The problem is I don't want to anymore. Uh, that's fair. I I was talking to my wife about that. I was like, I don't know if I've gotten softer in my years or what, but like the thought of hunting doesn't appeal to me anymore. That's I don't very fair. I don't need to kill something. Yeah. Uh, athletics. This is your general check for not stumbling when running through the woods, moving <laughs> across waterways. General athletics. General athletics. Yes. So I'm going to look at this like when we used to run the Savage Races. I was middle of the pack. I'd say a three. I wasn't at the lead. I wasn't at the tail end. I could make it through most of the stuff. I feel like I could still do that. When pressed. (laughs) (laughs) I gave myself a two. Uh, I feel like on long distance travel, like bike riding and hiking, I'm really good. I can even, well, size my shoulder, I can climb. I'm good at climbing rocks and that kind of things, but... I still got to give myself to one. I don't feel like I'm high enough on the pack of that. I would think you're a three. I appreciate that. A foraging. This is the ability to forage for food and know if that food is poisonous or not. (sighs) There was a time I could almost give myself a five, I'm sure. Wow. But I would say now I'm a strong three. Well, all right. Yeah. I give myself a one. Really? No. Yeah, I don't know that I could identify mushrooms versus ones that are going to kill you versus not. Just avoid them. 
<laughs> they can avoid all mushrooms. Yeah. 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 Well, see, I've gotten lazy now. I've got an app on my phone that you just scan it and it tells you exactly what it is you're looking at. Yeah, you're not going to have that. I know. That's the thing. I've gotten lazy. Yeah. So If I brought my mother with me, it would easily be a five. That woman can look at a plant and know everything about it. All right. We have down to our last four that I have. Okay. I'm willing to take any categories you suggest after this. Mechanical repair. Now. There are two ways to think about mechanical repair. <sighs> Obviously, we all know there are two modes of transport that are great for the apocalypse. Horses and bicycles. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, if, you you can keep, fuel. if you can keep a car running for as long as possible, that is a high advantage. It is. In the apocalypse. So when I'm looking Ooh. at my mechanical repair, I kind of think it's kind of split into two, but you, you've come up with your own number. Yeah, because my problem is, you know, I'd be like, yeah, you know, I can tinker on a car, but then if it's like an Apache helicopter, I'm like, oh, I'm so right. yeah, yeah, but should you check this plug, the plug wires? Uh, <laughs> is the carburetor good? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it sounds like it's got a valve tap. It's not even running. I know. <laughs> can you hear it? Um, I had two. So I gave myself a three. And my justification is... You know a lot about bike repair. I know a lot about bike repair. I can... I might not be able to service every bike, but I'll get your bike running. I yeah. can get that bike working to use. Right. You know, it's not going to be tuned up for racing. Yeah. Uh, and I can keep... I have a general knowledge of cars enough to keep a car running for a little while. Yeah. But I think I can keep a bike running indef indefinitely. Right. And I could also replace parts on bikes. Yeah. Which is, that's important. Yeah. I mean, I can shoe a horse. That's important to know, too. Yeah. Farrying could have been a skill I put on here. Yeah. Didn't put it. I mean, it's kind of blacksmithing, kind of this repair. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, pretty good animal handling check. This is going to be an important one. Ooh. Woodworking. When we can't smith, because we're both retarded, we don't know how to work <laughs> <laughs> forges. Uh, we're going to have to know how to woodwork. Yeah. Building shelters, yep. building, just carving, you know, utensils you need. Yeah. Woodworking is going to be very important. At four. Four? Yeah. Wow. I watch a lot of videos about, like, people making log cabins by hand and stuff like that. And, and you look at that and say, I could do that. Yeah. So I watch those videos and say, I have no chance of doing yeah, that. You just V things out, you measure, yeah. I watch videos of woodworkers and I'm like, oh, of course, you just use a dovetail. And then they're like, do you do this joint? And I'm like, I don't know which joint to use when. Oh, man, joinery is so much fun. It is kind of fun to watch. Yeah. I gave myself a two yeah. because I do know what joints are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I give myself a four because I, mean, I, you know, I built my own deck. I built the shed. Yeah. Huh? yeah and yes, I did sense. have power tools for those, but. You know. well, but the, the the principles are the same. You would know yeah. it would just require more effort. Oh yeah, yeah. You know how to do it. Just the yeah. effort would suck. And it, when I took shop class eons ago in high school, uh, I remember our first year we weren't allowed to use any power tools. So anything we made had to be made by hand. And it was to prove that you could work with the wood the right way. Hmm. So. Yeah, you, know, you had to like label all the different tools and know the difference between a pull saw and a you know cross saw and yeah yeah you got me there I don't know if there's, <laughs> I didn't know there was, I would just say that's a saw that's a saw yeah, yeah. Uh, this is important research this is the ability to go and figure out I mean libraries are still going to exist or books yeah. are still going to exist to find information cross check that information compile Useful information for you to use. Gosh. The Dewey Decimal System back in action. Yeah. Next yeah, thing, you're not going to be able to just Google search things. There's not going to be no Google. Oh, no. Oh. My God, they'll have like some Funkin Wagnall encyclopedia from the 80s. God. God, I'd probably say in there something stupid. Like that. Um, let's say a four. I can research. I 
I gave myself a five. You should easily get a five. This is what I went to college for. Yeah. This is what I do on for funsies. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is like, this is my jam. Yeah. And you say, hey, go sit in the library. We're going to go build a shelter. That's, I'm your guy. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You I'll know. build the shelter. You do the research. Right. Now this one, I think you and I will score well, but I think a lot of people would score poorly on map reading. Oh. <laughs> There's not going to be GPS anymore. No, there's not. Yeah. You're going to have to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Because once you, you know. And you have to factor in topography and all that kind of stuff. It's not just a straight line. Topographical maps are a real thing that yeah. you need to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Those little weird curvy lines mean things. <laughs> they, they definitely mean things. <laughs> um, yeah, I give myself a four again. Yeah, I gave myself a four as well. I feel like, uh, well, first off. We grew up in the fire service in a time when you had to read maps. Yeah. We're very familiar with maps. <laughs> I use maps all the time. Yeah. I keep, I still keep hard copy maps in my house just because I know that eventually I'll need them if the world goes to shit. Yeah. Yeah. I just I was, see you having like this stack of parchment tubes beside your desk. You're, oh, I need to update this map of Kent County. <laughs> I, I do ha- I do have an atlas. I keep an atlas, uh, a road atlas, which okay. is very useful. It's not super useful anymore, but you know, something went wrong. Yeah. Major roads still there. Yeah. So that is my one, two, three, twelve stats for the yeah. apocalypse. Those are pretty good. That if we were to be characters. Yeah. Now the side note to this, unless you had any you wanted to add, I any- can't think of anything off the top of my head. Okay. Side note to this, as it's looking at your 12, so obviously we both have a weakness in smithing. Yeah. Um, your lowest numbers are smithing and survival. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. Pretty average everywhere else. You know, now you have to think about as a character, where do I need to level up? Ooh. Clearly, one of us has to become the smith, and one of us has to become yeah. better at. Well, I mean, you're all about the food. I would, I would take the smithing. Yeah. Because I mean, I helped our farrier t- at times. I feel it's... like I'd have to up my fishing game because yeah. you know, you can't just have one person being in charge of fishing and hunting. Yeah. It's not going to work out for us <sighs> as a group, as a party. Well, yeah. Breaking down fish. Oh man. I'm probably not too good at that either. If you make the right cut, you can just rip it all out in one go. Yeah. As soon as you told me to take the asshole out of a deer, I'd be in trouble. (laughs) (sighs) And I think I'd have to, as I'd have to level up my mechanical repair. Yeah. That would probably be my biggest thing I'd have to work on is make sure that my repair, mechanical repair skills get are better. Yeah. And that I have the tools to do so. Yeah, and I would need a smith to make the tools for me. Yeah, yeah, a smith to make the tools. You can't just go down to the Harbor Freight. Can't just go down to Harbor Freight. It's hmm. not going to happen. That's where people are going to raid first. That's where. Yeah. Well, not really. Gun jobs. Yeah. <sighs> yeah that, that gun's was it. not going to was... do you a lot of good unless you can, yeah, make new bullets and new yeah. shells. And once you run out of gunpowder, yeah, then you got to do some research, figure out how you make gunpowder. Yeah, you got to figure. I look at the apocalypse like, like this. Coal and saltpeter and sulfur or something? Uh, yes. That's some of it. Nitrate. It's like a, some no, sort of nitrate. Yeah. You need carbon. Yeah. And then I think the saltpeter is a positive reaction. It's like a cattle. Yeah. But it's been a hot minute since I had to. I actually did make gunpowder once in chemistry. Wow. But, it's been a long time. but, you know, if you think about the apocalypse, a real apocalypse, a real. Yeah. So it's like they're not gonna be like all these gun nuts are like, oh, there's gonna be all kinds of guns everywhere. No, people are gonna shoot those guns. Yeah. Very early on in the event. Oh yeah. Yeah. It'd be just ammo laying around everywhere. That's because they see these movies and these shows and they're they're always stumbling across these caches of right. you know, yeah. munitions. Yeah. Medicine's gonna be the big Yeah. That's gonna be the big one. Which is it's tied right. into it dentistry. Dentistry. Oh my god, you know, always freaked me out about that. Um, and I thought it was one of the best representations. Of that was the movie Castaway. 
Oh, it, didn't he rip out his own tooth? Just to bash out his own tooth. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Which, by the way, would totally get infected. He would have died on that island. Yeah. <laughs> he took a, a ice skate and bashed his own tooth out. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it's sterile. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's precise. Yeah. Ha. Ah. Well, that is my uh, RPG survival skills. Yeah, We've rated ourselves. Yeah. We are ready to go. Can I go make my own bow and arrow? <laughs> Work on our field craft? Yeah. Well, you have to make like, if I have learned anything, you have to make like 100 bows and arrows. You have to make a bow, break it down, make another bow, just keep doing that until you're really good at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how games work. Yes. <laughs> you do those crazy double bows that pull against each other to like double sorry, the full strength. Yeah, it's it's a way. I can't remember what the name of the bow is itself, but it looks like a standard recurve bow with a smaller version of it flipped around in front and you attach the tips like top bottom to bottom top to top and then you do your regular string so when you pull it's like pulling against a bow against a bow and it increases the draw weight and all so you don't just have to yeah you can you can make a stronger bow out of a weaker wood Hmm. yeah i've basically never used a bow in my life so. I've got one six feet away from me right now. Yeah, I've never. I remember once as a kid, my neighbor had one. I tried to shoot it one time in his backyard, and it, the arrow fell out, and I was like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've, I've ever had to fire a bow ever since. Yeah. So I would be terrible at bow hunting. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I watch archery stuff also. Oh, that's fun. It's amazing some of these shots people can do. Yeah. Can't go to that. All right. Well, topic okay. two. Sure. Topic two. I was going to talk about my little trip to New England. Oh, yes. Have you <laughs> buried the hatchet? Ended the feud? No. If anything, the feud is worse. <laughs> the feud is, feud is stronger than ever it was. Is. It is. It is. I, so... I, I was getting texts going, oh, this isn't, the yeah, it, not getting it, better. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. So we uh, yeah, we flew into Boston. And Boy, we were tired. Yeah. Uh, picked up our rental car and then drove down to Connecticut. And the drive was fine through Massachusetts. And then we hit Connecticut. And we see all of these construction ahead and all these ways alerts and this and that. And one thing, people of Connecticut, do you just abandon your vehicles on the side of the road? Because there were so many caution vehicle on side of road ahead. And they were always there. It was seriously like you couldn't go a mile without seeing a car on the side of the road. Oh. So I was like, okay. All right. It go, went through all those quote unquote construction areas. Never saw a bit of construction. Never. Yeah. So, uh, and asked my sister and brother-in-law about it. And, yeah, his response was, yeah, that's Connecticut. I was like, okay. I was like, and yeah, my sister was like, yeah, they always say there's construction, but it's never there. I was like, yeah, yes. And uh, yeah, and it was by the time we got to their house, I was like, screw Connecticut. He's like, and rightfully so. No one wants to go to Connecticut. <laughs> I said, see, see, it's a known thing. Did they so, live in Connecticut? No, they live in Mass. Oh, so they live in Western Mass? Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. they live in Air Mass, which is like 30 minutes west of Boston. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, we, so we get into uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, which my brother pointed out. I never even looked for the Waterbury uh, Country Club where Happy Gilmore played his first round. Oh, the Waterbury Open. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even think to look about that. Um, But, yeah, we go in and I was like, well, this looks like a delightful little slum. Um. <laughs> It was not great. Um, Got our hotel room. Checked in. We're like, okay, let's find dinner. So we were like, you know, there's Italian joint. Can't go wrong with Italian. Yeah, yeah, you can. (laughs) Um, On the way there, there's like all these like 
old factories where they busted out windows and everything. I was like, this, this, this place is just beaten up. And at first my wife had wanted to walk. I said, I'm glad we didn't walk. <laughs> so we got to the Italian joint and it was more Mediterranean Italian than like that, like Italian I think of, which is fine. But, you know, so, but something in that dinner did not sit well with me because I spent starting at midnight, 10 hours after that on and out of the bathroom. So it's like, okay, this is, you know, again, you're poisoning me, Connecticut way to go. Um, so we went to the wedding. It was a delightful ceremony. If you're a Catholic, I guess I didn't agree with the whole women are subservient and you must obey the man and it's all about the man. And Oof, yeah, that's yeah, a rough. lots of stand up, sit down, kneel. Um, the, lot, the stand up, sit down, kneel is what gets me. Yeah. Well, they're, what? they have little flip down kneely posts. Oh yeah. 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 And I read in the one part it was, it said you were supposed to shake hands for the Lord or something. I misunderstood that. And when it came to that point, I did jazz hands. You're supposed to turn to your neighbor and shake their hand. (laughs) (laughs) So I got a couple stairs. (laughs) Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. um, Yeah. Uh, I I was blown away by the decadence of the church. And I'm like, isn't the church supposed to be all about taking care of people and whatever? Oh, that, that, that. Yeah. But this getting in dangerous waters we're talking about. I know. Yeah, it is. That's why I was like, all right. So, wedding's over. And in the, I'm going to, I'm going to run this one by you. If it says service is at such and such, it was like the chapel of immaculate conception or something reception to follow at XYZ country club. Sure. What time would you think that reception was? I mean, an hour later. Damn you. We saw reception to follow. So we went right over there. Oh, service was over at three. Sure. They're like three 30. Yeah. And they had this tent outside and everything. I'm like, oh, okay. And I walk up and the guy's like, oh, no, no, you can't be here. I was like, well, we're here for the reception. Hey, you got to go through the bar. It's like, okay, whatever. So we go in through the bar and the girl's like, you can't go out there. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, we're not seating anybody till 4.30. It's like 4.30. And they're, of course, only the Marylanders who I guess didn't get the note, you know, were there. Everybody else knew that there was a delay. So that. I made friends with the bartender, nice young lady. I said, can we just get a couple drinks? She's like, ah, the open bar. I was like, I will pay you money. Just give me a beer. So we got that. We sat there and then the reception was, it was nice. The kids danced. Everybody had a good time. We watched drunken people act like idiots. Uh, so the next yeah, I would, morning. I was oh, say my, my experience at big church weddings like that is usually it's about an hour between that and the reception. I guess you got to figure the party's got to get, you know, they got to pack all the stuff up. They got to move over to the, get the limo. It's, it's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I have a friend who had a, that, a see, wedding. We thought, then, we thought that's <laughs> what they were doing. They were looking out for people and giving them a one hour open bar. Before. <laughs> I had a friend who did that. And that was a mistake. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, so the, uh, the next day we, uh, we packed up from Connecticut, hit the road, and headed to uh, spend some time with my sister and my brother-in-law in air. Thor. Yeah. Well, so, one, I mentioned that at dinner time. I was like, but, you know, we're just sitting there. I was like, by the way, a buddy of mine always refers to you as Thor. My sister, like, grabs her husband by the arm. It's like, oh, you can be Thor. I was like, Jesus, God. <laughs> God ruined. But I will say in between, like we were yeah, running here, showing us stuff and this and that. And we were trying to figure out what we were going to do for dinner. So we went back to their little house for a while and there was a storm front coming in. I swear to you, he was in, he had gone back to his office or something. He's like, I got to check on something. He came out of the hallway. The thunder cracked and he said, have we decided on dinner yet? It was like perfect timing. It's like, Jesus, he is Thor. Um, but no, we, uh, my sister took us to a, there's a little castle near them that like, I guess they had started to build and then they abandoned eons ago and everything's really neat. 
That's cool. Um, and, yeah, hiked there, hiked around some other places. Uh, there's just so many trails and stuff for them to ride. It's amazing up there. Um, she took us, they had this lovely, by, by the way, that's everywhere, but the Eastern shore. Yeah, I know <laughs> this lovely little Italian joint in downtown Groton, Massachusetts. Um, like family run. There's like, it was like a little, like, look like a delicatessen almost like, you know, the, the window there and they had some antipasties and stuff out and everything. You ordered your stuff and then there's some guy in the back making it, bring it right to you. And yeah, it was just phenomenal. And uh, they took us to, uh, or yeah, that was it. We're like, you know, when we're trying to, when Helgi came out, it's like, well, you know, have you figured out dinner? Yeah, my sister was like, oh, we should go to Tits. I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it's this place called Tavern in the Square. It was a nice place. It was like a nice, not chain version of like a green turtle pub style place. Sure. So That's nice. That's lovely. Yeah. Yep, yep. So we went there, you know, and everything. Then, uh, you know, said bye to them. Uh, headed off to uh, Boston. Walked around Boston. Um, we Ubered in the first morning, just because we didn't know how, exactly how far and where we wanted to go. Um, it was supposed to rain. So, but we uh, started out, or I'm sorry, before we went to Boston, we did stop and walk around Harvard. Ooh. Yeah, that was uh, intimidating. Go to the yard. Uh, yeah, and we went to the, they, oh my gosh, they had all these like, like uh, bookstores and it was like the first, the first floor was like all new stuff. And then the bottom was like trades and, you know, like old books and, you know, so you would have loved it. It sounds amazing to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we spent like a half hour there easily just looking around and looking at stuff hmm. and everything. I've probably been like, okay, trip's here now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we've sold a lot of stores like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then we uh yeah we got into Boston. We stayed uh, near the harbor. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, walked around. We started at Fenuli Hall or Fenuel Hall. Fenuel, Fenuel Hall. Sure, I know, I know, I don't know how to say it. I know how to spell it, but yes. yeah, F E N U E L or whatever. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, I mean, you know, saw statues of Sam Adams and all kinds of stuff, and you know, there's all this like historic stuff. You know, like Sarah and I'm like, oh, isn't this neat? And the kids are like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um. But yeah, it, I, I will say that walking around that town, yeah, I know like Salisbury tries to be something. Salisbury is nothing. Salisbury is a shithole. <laughs> I, wow. I, it took me this to realize this, I guess. So I was like, oh, yeah, Salisbury is the city. No, 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 no. Boston is nice. It's I mean, well, one the drivers there are insane. They are. They are insane. Oh, oh, oh. And that was the stupid uh, Uber the first day because there were four of us. So I would always, do you mind if I sit up front? Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, and I, the one guy, the first day into Boston, I get up and I'm like, I feel weird. I put my hand, I was like, my hand is wet. The guy had spilled coffee in the seat. Oh. So I look like I had shat my pants. Oh, God. So at first, and Sarah's like, oh, God, do you want to, you know, I was like, maybe we'll find a place to buy short. And eventually I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm, I'm a tourist. Nobody knows me here. If they think I poop my pants, I will. Right. So that's very, that's very grown up of you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's all kinds of stuff. Like I said, the Harbor, they had like, there were street performers. They have these little parks all around that aren't like, you know, full of syringes and things. Uh, not a lot of homeless people. Um, uh, we saw a few, Yeah, sure. but not as many. I felt like it wasn't as many. Um, I will Good, say they're very, they're very concentrated in Salisbury. Yeah. Um, so weed is legal there. Yes. Barely smelled it. Wow. Really? Yes. And it, Sarah and I both commented on this. We're like, this is, this is refreshing. Cause like there were these signs. It was like, Oh gosh, what it was. It was like, um, we vibe.com or something. It was like, you do you will supply the weed or something. It was like this website. They'll deliver weed to your house. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, going around everything, seeing all this stuff. And of course, you know, there's all the touristy stuff like the duck boats and all that. And which, oh my gosh, there it's like 60 bucks a person to ride that duck boat tour. No, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also, some, you know, tours walking around. Uh, we went to the new England aquarium. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. They, it, was, it was penguin feeding time when we walked in. It was perfect. Nice. Yep. nice. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, and another thing, that if Salisbury really wants to do something, step it up and get a little Italy. We, we, get, well, 
we you went to Little one. Italy, and because we were trying to figure out dinner the last night, and, and I'm like, oh yeah, let's find an Italian joint and that has gluten free pasta for my youngest. So we're looking. I'm like, this place they say they can do any pasta gluten free, and my wife was like, what's the name of it? I was like, it's La Familia Giorgio. I was like, and it's in Little Italy. So yeah, and she's like, are you sure it's Little Italy? And then as we're Ubering in. Cause we had walked like nine miles that day. We're like, we're not walking anymore. Sure. So we're walking and it's like, everything is an Italian name and flat. I was like, yes, we are in little Italy. This place was amazing. It was a family style Italian restaurant. They were packed and rightfully so because they made the best. It was, it was good food. It was good service. They were super nice. And, uh, I was stuffed after eating and you know, I was like, oh, God, I bet they have really good cannoli. So I was like, let's get a couple cannolis to go. Best cannoli I've ever had. And yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's weird. I would say I want a whole, every time I go to new England, the food is always great. Yeah. Um, and you just struck me something that I just had never thought of until just now. Every city has neighborhoods. Salisbury has no neighborhoods. No, it doesn't. Like, you know, like... Oh, it has the stabby neighborhoods. Sure, but like Wilmington, we have Little Italy, we've got Polish Town, yeah. we've got Brown Town, we got all these little yeah. little enclaves of neighborhoods that all have right. their own vibe. Yeah. Do you don't have that in Salisbury. Yeah, no. I never thought and, about that. Yeah, and I mean, it's even on like, you know, you looked at the map of Boston, it's like, oh, here's Chinatown, here's Little Italy. Oh, yeah. You know, places like that. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, trust me, if we had more time, we would have gone to Chinatown. I would have gone to, you know, I'm sure they have a Polish section. Yeah, they, like... Chicago's like that too. Like, yeah. You know, Chinatown, Chicago. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I just love those, those kinds of cities because I love to go in those neighborhoods and be like, I'm just going to try this random Italian place. And yeah. you're like, Oh my God, this is the greatest Italian food I've yeah. ever had in my life. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm going to read this Chinese place. That I don't even can read, can't even read the, yeah. the, yeah. I'm just going to be gonna able point. to point. <laughs> yep. And it'll be the best Chinese food I'll ever yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, you know, we're trying to figure out where to eat and, you know, it, of course, you know, things pop up. It's like, oh, five guys and stuff. No, 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 no. We're not going to any place we've ever heard of while we're up right. here. And it yeah. was, it worked out wonderfully. So, uh, uh, Philo's is a little Italian joint in Groton that we went to. F-I-L-O, F-I-L-H-O-S, I want to say something like that. Seems like but, a lot more vowels than Yeah, it is. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we saw a lot, you know, a lot of neat stuff. Uh, Got myself a new hat. So that was Ooh. my goal. I, I wanted to keep the sun off my head. And, Good. Uh, I was torn because I saw this one, and I really liked the design of it, but it was a Boston Bruins hat. And I'm not a hockey fan, so I felt like I would be posing buying said hat. So I just got one that's just got like a plain B, and it says mass on the back. Do the hat. I did hat not. I almost bought the shirt that said, you're a mass hole. <laughs> um, they embrace Mass Hole. Oh, yeah. Them. Yep. And at Harvard, there was the Wicked Smart shirts. Wicked Smart. Yep. So, but yeah, yeah, like I said, delightful time. I told my wife I'd definitely go back to Boston, not Connecticut. Um, <laughs> I mean, you didn't go to the nicest part of Connecticut either. So, uh, okay. So I described our adventure in Connecticut. And my brother-in-law says, that's 90% of Connecticut. That's why <laughs> everyone hates Connecticut. <laughs> see, 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 see. Come on, he does he's a no, he's a Viking. He, he knows. But my sister nodded along with everything. She's a shore belly. <laughs> no, she's not. She from the shore? No. Yeah, she's from Virginia Beach. Oh, that's still the shore. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. But yeah. But yeah, it's a, every time I go up there, I have a lovely time. I, I uh and yes, you are right. Salisbury is not a city. Yeah. Salisbury. Oh, and I found out New Hampshire doesn't have sales tax. Yeah, it's the New Hampshire, Delaware, and yeah. Oregon. Yeah, I think. Are sales tax. Although, from what my relatives said, that New Hampshire is turning into the Florida of New England. Uh, I've heard that too. <laughs> so yeah. they were like, "Yeah, we just rent you in there, do our tax-free shopping, come home." Yeah, so. yeah. But it's like, I mean, they were talking. I was like. You know, oh, how far is it? And they're like, oh, yeah, I mean, a couple hours we can be on the Cape and everything. I'm like, That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Although my sister terrifies me and, you know, I hadn't really thought about it much until my wife pointed it out. She's like, yeah, you know, I got another camping trip come up, you know, coming up. And, 
you know, Helgi always makes sure that I call him, you know, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. She'll go for a week long camping, hiking trip through like the Green Mountains by herself. Sounds awesome. Except that she could be eaten by a bear. Could be. Yep. She's like, oh, I keep I keep my bear spray on me. She goes, yeah. we struck struck by a car, rocking around traffic. Who cares? I, I, guess, I guess so. Yeah, but yeah. So I get you're forewarned. Yeah. You're smart about it. Sounds awesome. Yeah. So yeah, and he should. is doing bicycle tours of New England. Ooh. Can I join him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what his website is or whatever. He, he works for a company, I guess. But he's like, yeah, I got to go to Nantucket and show a bunch of people around. That sounds awesome. That sounds like a yeah. great job. Yeah. Why that, not have and, that he's a, and he's a swim coach. Of course he is. Because he, well, that's what he did in Iceland was swim. Yeah. So. Here I am, a sucker fireman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a lovely trip. It was. It was. Except for Connecticut. Except for Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Bo- yes, Boston is is awesome yeah. place to go. I highly recommend you just go to mm. random cities and try places out. Yeah. Real cities. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of avoid Baltimore. I'm sorry, Baltimore. Yeah. You're very much like Salisbury. One thing that uh, Helgi did say was that he missed like the food truck scene of Baltimore. Sure. That's fair. It's a good way to get the poops. Well, yeah. But he was like, you know, it's, it was like every week because they both went to school in Baltimore. That's how they met. Um, you know, it's like every week there was a new set of food trucks, it seemed like. So it was, you know like an ever changing thing. I think that's kind of died out anyways. Really? Yeah. We kind of had the same thing for a little while, but it seems to have mm-hmm. kind of yeah. died out. A lot of the people that were successful opened up restaurants and the ones that aren't successful are kind of just limping along and you don't want yeah. to go eat there. For the most well, part. Also, I mean, some of these food trucks, it's like, Oh yeah, it's what I want to spend $20 for a hot dog and fries. Oh yeah. They're insane. The prices are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, evidently Dunkin' Donuts is a huge thing in the new uh, New England. Dunkin' Donuts is a cult in New but England. It, but, it, but they're like, you can't tell it's a Dunkin' Donuts on the outside. It's not like yeah. the Dunkin' Donuts down here that's the pink and orange and all that. No, no, no. They're, they're yeah. like high class. Yeah, yeah. It's a cult. Yeah. yeah. It's we we have nothing to on them. It's a cult. Wow. Like there was one we went by and it was like gold filigree Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I was like, good lord. Yeah. This is the cathedral of the Immaculate Duncan. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it, Duncan. They take Dunkin' Donuts very seriously up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because our Dunkin' Donuts, well, at least in <sighs> Delaware, ours used to be Mr. Donuts. Oh. So, like, Mr. Donut used to be, like, the Delaware PA region, and then Dunkin' Donuts bought them out. Uh-huh. But up there, like, Dunkin' Donuts are, like, at least in my experience, they're, they're usually not freestanding buildings. They're usually in something else. Yeah. You know. They're not just like a. It's not have space for a, a big freestanding Dunkin' Donuts, right? You know, yeah. and eh, Dunkin' Donuts is a cult. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts up there, it's like which Dunkin' you going to the one here or the one across the street? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the other thing in Boston. We went to the Boston Market, not the stupid restaurant, the actual Boston Market, and there was some. I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a fair kind of thing or like an open mar- open air market kind of deal and both of those oh my i i told my wife i was like i i'd be you know we'd be here every week buying our groceries and spending way too much money but this stuff it, you know it's like local authentic foods and things i told her i said if we had a little italy that had a you know la familia giorgio i would be 300 pounds well here's the answer you're about to close to retire Just yeah retire up to boston yeah yeah yeah, yeah be like, oh, mr truitt yeah <laughs> Come in Giorgio, with... I'm here for the cannoli again. Yeah. <laughs> here, we got your, me, here we got your fan morning. for your sweat. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the compromise I make with my wife is because I always wanted to be back in the city because I have to live in the Newark, which is a close, as close as she'll come to a city. Yeah. But I miss that. Like, oh, I'm just going to walk down to the Lily and have, yeah. let's see, I said it was Mama Rubino's, but, Oof. you know. It just sounds good. Oh my god, it's good. the meatballs are the size of your head. That's this place. Yeah, it was like the, the meatballs and the wedding singer. When she's like, "Hold out your hands." That's the way the meatballs were at this place. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Cause I heard like this, these got the cup or uh table sitting next to us. The guy was like, what do you mean? It only comes with two meatballs. So like, I'll take your meatballs. And the guy brought out this, he's like, here's your spaghetti and here's your meatballs. It's like, oh, gonk. Yep. Yep. Oh, and they had a challenge. Or they had like five challenges, but the one, it was all of them like eat X amount of food in an hour and you get a t-shirt and your name put on the wall or whatever. But the one, it was like the lasagna challenge, eat six pounds of lasagna. Holy crap. Yeah. And the other, the others were like eight of those meatballs and two ish pounds of penne or something. It's like, Oh my God, I can't imagine. I bet that, uh, I bet that lasagna is pretty banging too. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah. No, I want to go up there and have lasagna. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was generic. I was like, I, I just wanted to try their, well, that was the other thing. It was like for their pasta, they had like eight sauces at the top or uh, eight different pastas at the top. And there were oh gosh, at least 21 different sauces. Oh yeah. And it, I, I told Sarah, I was like, you can come here every week and get a different combination. Mm-hmm. I was like, and I would want to try every combination. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, I was just, I just got fettuccine Alfredo and it was amazing. Sounds like my friend needs to take more vacations and go places. Yeah. Well, yeah. Places other than stupid shore. <laughs> well, don't go to Connecticut. Yeah. Well, that too. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. My wife was like, oh, you know, well, maybe next time we could go through Rhode Island. I was like, I don't know about that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Those are my people. I know. No. Those are fight words. They're, <laughs> those are my people. My family lives in Rhode if Island. If Rhode Island could just take over Connecticut and make it better, I'd be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Well, that's like, and I I understand my wife. You know, she didn't want, she saw the rage in me and driving to the airport and then away from the airport and everything. But I, we didn't save a ton of time flying up there. No. God, no. It's only a six a, hours. Uh, six hours for you guys. Yeah, I mean, by the time you go to the airport, for you guys, it's two hours of the airport. Yeah. You and wait around wait. the airport for an hour, maybe two. Flew for an you, hour. Then you fly for an hour. And then it takes you an hour to get out of, you know, the yeah. airport. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. You, you could have been there. That's what I said. Yeah. But. Well, my suggestion is take the train, but, you know. What is this Nobody train was, you speak of? What's this machine? It's got a lot of cars. <laughs> And you go to the train station and you say, I would like one, two, three, four tickets to Boston, please. And they say, okay, you can start drinking on the platform and we will, <laughs> you, you can ride the train drinking alcoholic beverages. You can bring snacks, do whatever you want. Oh yeah. That was the flight, which again, it was get up, come back down. So it was yeah. whatever they're coming around for the ser- service and the leaves. Yeah. You know, food or drink. I was like, I, I'm good. I had a bottle of water. I'm I'm not parched. It's we've been in the air for 35 minutes, if that. Yeah. And my daughter was like, I would love a ginger ale. She said, water, coffee, tea. Those are what I said. I was like, oh, aren't we a delight? <laughs> Welcome to the Northeast. Yeah. This <laughs> we, lady yeah. was not from the Northeast. Anything, <sighs> any like eight hours seems like the number for me. If a drive takes eight hours, I'm going to consider flying. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, six hours. That's. I, there's no time. We drive. We drive five hours to Deep Creek. What's to say? There's no situation in which I'm going to save time. Right. Flying under six hours. Like Florida, I would not drive to Florida because it's a two-hour flight versus a sixteen-hour drive. That seems like pretty easy math for me. Yeah. But New York City, I'm not flying to New York City. No. And Boston's only what an hour from New York City. What the? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you thinking? Of? Yeah, yeah. That's there were people flying flying from LaGuardia to Boston. Oh yeah. Crazy. So uh, whatever. But yeah, definitely, I'll definitely go back. Yeah, good. good. So, uh, everybody seemed to have a good time. So good. Youngest didn't kill anybody. No. Oh no. Then yeah. that's a win. Oldest looked at it. You know, we we're walking around Harvard and was like, "This is kind of neat." <laughs> I'm glad the oldest has a uh, good taste. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, is it? Uh, <laughs> what scholarships does old Harvard have? Uh, <laughs> better start working on that old resume, and yeah. you better have already started submitting your stuff. Yeah. Well, th- it, that was one thing. Yeah. 
my family were you know, hanging out with them that day and they're like, Oh, you know, you're looking at any colleges while you're up here. And, you know, they're like, you know, if you want to come up here and look, you know, you can stay with us and, you know, go, go wherever. And you're know, like, you know, if you ever do, do going to a college up here, you know, you've got always got a place to stay and, you know, thing. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. And, um, and my sister was like, well, anywhere, but, and my wife goes, don't worry. We already said she can't go anywhere in Connecticut. Like, that's right. <laughs> UConn's a very nice school. Yeah, UConn, Stanford, you're off the list. <laughs> <sighs> Go Huskies. I mean, they have the... Oh, God damn, no, no, no. Man, it's a harsh world around here. Yeah, Boston University, Harvard. Oh, sure, yeah, I mean, Boston University, Harvard, <laughs> Brown. <laughs> yeah, they're cheap, right? Tub change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get in there for a song. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Apologies, Connecticut, but you suck. Sorry, Connecticut. I tried. Yeah. Wismer did. Yep. I, I, I looked up stuff to try and redeem you. <laughs> I tried. I really was on your side, Connecticut. I was really rude for oh, you. We went to this place in Mass. It was a interactive video game kind of thing. Sure. Where you like, put these visors on, and it's got like the motion tracking stuff at your head. Mm-hmm. It was like this big four player game and all. It was Ooh. super fun. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. It, it was like on our way in. It was right before we right before we got to Harvard. It was in some mall. And sounds like you guys had an amazing trip. Yeah. It was we we're like, ah, we're gonna stop for food anyway. So we stopped there and yeah, it was like I don't know, we got like second out of fifteen of you know, their contestants that week or whatever. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So our name is up there. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. Put your mark on the world. We did. We did. <laughs> so. But yeah. Yeah. And I'd. Uh, yes. I would like to take trips to other cities at some point. Good. I, I think our next one's going to be uh, Nashville. I don't, I've never been to Nashville, but I was going to say Portland, Maine. Very nice. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go in the winter. No. Well, <laughs> if you want to hey, ski. I don't know if they can really ski in Portland. You got to go Not like Portland. outside of Portland. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I don't ski anymore. I did it as a kid. I, now it just seems like jumping down a mountain to die. Yeah, I haven't skied in 23 years. Um, it's, probably, it's been at least 20 for me. So, yeah, at least 20. Probably yeah. 22 somewhere now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm probably, I am sure I'd hurt myself at some point. Yeah, I was a younger man. I could uh, bounce, bounce back from injuries. Oh, now yeah. I, now I wake up wrong and then my shoulder hurts yeah. and my knee hurts. I woke my knee was just hurting for like a week. I don't I don't know why. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, if we did both say when we got home we we're like, "Oh, it's so nice to sleep in our own bed." I mean, the beds were nice, but it's just not the same. It's not the same. No. The pillows are always wrong. Oh my god, their pillows were awful. Yeah, it's always the pillows. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, we're hoity-toity kids. Oh, I don't like this toilet paper. This is hands down above any toilet paper at my work, so enjoy. <laughs> so or who knows, because there's seven different kinds of toilet paper in the city of Salisbury. There are, yeah, there are. Sometimes in the same bathroom. Yep, sometimes. Ugh, animals. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. Well, it sounds like you had an amazing trip. Glad you're getting out there and trying new things. I'm glad you discovered what cities have to offer. <laughs> yeah. I sound like the little country mouse. <laughs> hmm. I saw the big city. <laughs> well, I think that's a good way to wrap up for the this yeah. week. Yeah, it is. Yeah. As uh, always, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter. This will see how true at 22. Yeah. Join the Discord. Please join the Discord. It's our short mythic draft. It's also mm-hmm. linked. Uh, this will drop before the fourth. It will. Fourth. It's a uh, the eve of the fourth. Eve of the fourth. Isn't that the actual day that it was declared? No. Was no, that was the second. the second. Yeah. Uh, this is the 160th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. I'll be going out there this weekend. I saw it was the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party. 250, 225. Oh, now it's got well. It was some, it's some big thing it's gotta be in December. Yeah. December of this year, they're having this big 250th 
celebration or whatever the Boston team. Yeah, it's got to be two fifty because two twenty five would have been. Yeah, that yeah that would. That doesn't work. It's got to be two fifty. Uh, twenty twenty. Yeah, so go up to uh, Boston in uh, December to celebrate the tea party. That doesn't make sense. What? Oh, that's why. But uh, yeah, that was one thing. Yeah, the little the museum for the tea party and everything. We didn't go through it, but we saw like one of the tours, and they have the ship. And they have bundles of quote unquote tea that you throw out and then they reel it back in for the next right. person to throw. Sure. So, yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Be good to each other. Yeah. Be good to each other and go enjoy new experiences. 